right? So the fact that we are here is that God has called us to himself because he wants to teach us something. He wants to show us something. And I pray that for the next few minutes, as we um, begin to have this conversation, as we start to unravel some things, God will really open your eyes. He will show you that which is for you, that wisdom that you need, right? To thrive, to sustain that journey, that career journey, whatever it is that you know you are invested in, the Lord will give you wisdom to know how to handle it. It will give you wisdom to thrive. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that that which the Lord has committed into your hands will not fail and it will not fall. But you have wisdom from above to know what to do, how to do it, who to speak to, where to go. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over you that the word of the Lord that has been said to you, prophecies that have been spoken to you is coming to pass in the name of Jesus. And I know that God is still raising more industry leaders, right? So in case you look at yourself and say, oh, I'm just in my first year or something, something. No, the fact that you are in this meeting, because remember that I said earlier, right? That you cannot approach if he doesn't call you. So the fact that you are here is because he has called you to himself because he wants to show you right? So God is still raising industry leaders amongst us here on this call, right? It's still setting people up, you know, on that industry throne. Is raising you to be a voice in your industry, in your sector. Is raising you as a woman who will chart the course for other women to come along, right? So that's what the Lord is doing. And I want you to not, you know, be discouraged by all. Uh, you know, I was telling someone that it's interesting how the Lord says where two or more are gathered. And we thank God I didn't say from when 10 or more are gathered. So it means that if it was just myself, right? And Miss Oingosala Tela, who, the, the, I mean, there's going to be a breakout because the spirit of the Lord is not constrained by the number. It's not constrained by the technology or by the systems and the structures. He moves as he wills. When a people give him access to move in their life, that's what happens. He moves as he wills, as access is given. So I want you to believe that there's a word for you from the Lord, right? He's raising you. As I was preparing, I just kept hearing, he's raising more women as industry leaders, as sector pillars, and as visionary voices. Is raising you as a pillar in your sector. You are not too young to rise to the top of your sector. It's not about the age. Do you see? You are not too young to rise to the top of your sector. You are not too young to be a resounding voice in your industry. Wherever you are right now, whether you are in your first year or as your second year or wherever, wherever you are right now, you are not too young for the Lord to use you as a resounding voice in your industry. He's raising future forward females in the workplace, right? In your school, in your industry, in your sector, everywhere. And your light is breaking forth speedily. Amen. Your light is breaking forth speedily, speedily. Your light is breaking forth. He's raising you up from obscurity into relevance. You might have looked at yourself and said, okay, I don't even know this career thing. Which one do I even want to do in all of these ones that I've been hearing? Is it HR? Is it finance? He's bringing clarity to you. Because let me tell you what, your career is not just something you just woke up and decide that, mm, what am I even good as gone? Your career is a calling, right? The same way that ministry gifts, right, of, or, or the pulpit ministry or five ministry gifts don't wake up one day and say, mm, I'd like to be a pastor, an apostle, a prophet. Mm, a wo, a wo ni Which one can I have pulpit? Right? The same way people don't wake up like that. It's the same way that your career is a calling that God gives to you. How he does it is in his infinite wisdom, but your career is a calling. So your career as a calling is not less than someone who stands behind the pulpit to preach. Yes, ma'am. Did you see that? Your career is a calling that God has given to you, that he looks at you, right? He looks at you, Moyo, and says, let me earn this big assignment to Moyo because I know that in a sector, she's going to work She's going to be diligent. She's going to do this and this and this. And she's going to advance the agenda of God's kingdom. That's how God sees it. And it's high time that you begin to see it like that. That you begin to see it like that. That, when that whatever profession that you are in, it doesn't stop God. It will use it 
so that you can rise to the top of the mountain because he knows that when you are there, the kingdom of God will advance. The kingdom of God will agenda. Agenda will agenda. <laughs> Do you see this? <laughs> so your career is a tool in God's hand to advance kingdom agenda. That's it. That's how I see it. That's how I see my career. That's how the Lord has taught me. I don't see ministry here. And then I see career here. I'm a ministry gift. Whether behind the pulpit or in the workplace as I'm doing my work, I am a ministry gift advancing the kingdom of God. And that's how we should see it. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Let's just say a word of prayer, you know, before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you and we adore you. And we know that when a people gather unto you is because you have called them. We are the ones that you have called to tarry in your presence. And we know that wherever the presence of God is, there is liberty. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And freedom includes wisdom that sets you free from every bondage. It includes wisdom to know how to navigate the terrains of our life, of our industries. And so, Lord, we trust you that that word that you have for us, that defining moment in our life will be established today in the name of Jesus. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, because you are doing something new. You are doing a new thing in our businesses, in our careers. You are doing a new thing and we will know it and we will see it. And at the end of the day, we will give all the praise, all the glory to your name. And we will say the Lord has done great things for us. We give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for it is in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. So, of course, I'm happy that this is being recorded. So, you know, you know, every other person um, who is not here right now um, can listen to it. Okay. So, let me go straight, you know, into what um, I have for today. First of all, let me thank uh, Miss Oyekosolatela for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted, right? It's always, I'm always joyful when I get to, you know, share moments like this with my siblings, right? Is this is how God is building us. This is how God is raising us, right, Miss Tella? Because soon, sooner than this, we are going to be, you know, at that big arena where I'm like, yeah, do you remember those days? Those days, those things that we're doing, this is how God raises men. Oh, yeah. Now God raises siblings in the supernatural. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, maybe today is Zoom. Tomorrow it could be in the UK. Tomorrow it could be in the nations of the world where we are yeah. speaking and sharing the gospel of God. That's what I see. So for me, it's a privilege to be here and I don't take it for granted. I truly, truly thank you. I thank God for the grace of God that is upon your life. I thank you so much for the work, for being faithful, for being committed to the work. God bless you. And to every um, leader, every gift that serves, you know, at the Network Revolution, I really thank you. I really bless God for you. Um, and I pray that you will grow, grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. All right, let me go straight into it. So here's what I want us to understand first. I want us to understand that it is the desire and the intention of God right, for you to break into new grounds, new territories in your career. So the topic that I've been asked to speak on today is how can women chart um, new territories in their career successfully? So I want you to understand first that it's not a worldly thing. It is God's desire, God's intention that in your career, you are breaking into new grounds. You are breaking into new territories, right? So let's establish that first and also understand that God is more invested and interested in your career advancing more than you are interested in it. You didn't really hear me. That the way you're looking at yourself and say, oh, I want to build, you know, a career in the something sector, in the human, um, in the human resource sector, in the oil and gas sector, you know, the way that desire is constantly coming to you that you're not able to sleep. God is more interested and invested in it. The way he's doing you is doing God times in, 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 in multiple times, hundred. Because what does the Bible say in Matthew 5, 16? It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven. So he knows that if you thrive in your career, he's going to take the glory. So more than you are invested, more than it interests you, God is like, me, I know when this my daughter gets there, 
our light is going to shine so bright and I'm going to take the glory. So you see that God is more interested in it, right? That's one thing, you know, that you should understand first. And there's also a commandment that he has given to us. Remember Genesis, it says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. The word fruitful, right, which is to bear fruits, is an order from God. It was an instruction. It was a command. So if God already commanded you, you see that he's more interested. He's more invested than you are because it was his order. It was the one who commanded it from the beginning of times. He says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. So he has already given you a commandment to thrive. Before you were born, before you came on the earth, God already gave you a commandment to thrive. So thrive you must. Whatever your aunt find they're doing, he says, do it as unto God. He says, it will bless the work of your hands. Hallelujah. So we establish that career is not man-made. It's not that someone woke up and say, ah, we, since we can't be tilling the garden anymore, what can people do? Let's give them different careers so that our economy can keep going on, so that we can boost, you know, the financial economy. No, it wasn't that. It was from the beginning of time. It was from the beginning of time. When he says be fruitful and multiply, God is the multifaceted God, right? So in the context of that scripture, it was referring to so many things that I'm sure that even the, the, the book could not contain. If you go forward to the New, in the New Testament, you will start to see different professions that you might not have even thought could have existed right? You will start to see how Paul, you know, and, and Barnabas, they were tent makers, right? Real estate agents. It's all there in the scripture. So you must also be able to find your profession in the scripture, your profession, your career. You must be able to find it in the scripture. One of the things that interests me, that excites me the most, and I don't hesitate to say whenever I get the opportunity, is that the work that I do as a people development partner is the framework from the scriptures. As a learning and development professional, it's from the scriptures. How Paul was writing letters, how Paul was teaching the different churches, how he was saying to this one, you, I know you, you are neither cold nor hot. You, I know you, your first love, you are burning. He knew them differently and so he could write different letters to them based on how he knew them. He taught them at the level to which they could grab it at which they had capacity so when i'm doing learning and development i don't come and offer someone who needs emotional intelligence i don't come and offer them communication let me not go into that that's 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 a that's a whole different lesson basically what i'm saying is that the strategies to run your career is in the scriptures let's move on now i have i i, I hear people say oh I'm trying to balance, I'm trying to balance, you know, career, spirituality, which am I, am I supposed to do? Is it fivefold ministry? Is it career? And all of those things. There was, we were not actually expected to balance. Balancing career and spirituality. There's no, you, you don't need to struggle. We were not intended to struggle for anyone. It says that man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in the body. Man is primarily a spirit. So you are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being who God has given work to do to advance the agenda of God. That's it. You are a spiritual being. So there's no, so anytime you, you find yourself struggling and say, ah, hey, this is my work. Ah, hey, I'm not able to attend, you know, prayer meeting or something. Know that something, something's already, mm -mm, mm -mm, it wasn't meant to be like that. Is that as you're doing the work, the spirit of the Lord is right there. You are a carrier of God's presence. You're just like, yeah, this work, I'm diligent in the work that I do. Echoes, 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 right where you are. So you don't need to step out of your career shoe to embrace your spirituality. No, you are a spirit. Wherever, however, you are a spirit. Hallelujah. So we already understand that the purpose of your career is to advance the agenda of God. For everyone who is on this call, right? I know that we understand the language that I'm speaking. 
So the purpose of your career is to advance the agenda of God. So five things that you must, you know, you know, must understand as I run through this quickly, because this is not even the crux of my, of my teaching this afternoon, is the first thing that God is your employer. You must know that. God is your employer, you know, and I'm going to break all this thing as I, as I go. God is your employer. Your work or career is a calling, right? Your work or your career is a calling. Your career is a tool for evangelism. You must know that. So it's not until you carry a megaphone before you evangelize and witness. And I think that's a lot of, that's one thing that a lot of Christians have challenges with. How you are doing work can also witness Jesus to people. That's, that's, that's another interesting message, right? Because I believe that as we're listening, the Lord will correct us. It will instruct us. It will encourage us. So there's none, there's none of this message that should, you know, make you feel bad. It's for us, it's for the Lord to correct us, to instruct us in righteousness, right? So I said, number one, God is your employer. Number two, your work or career is a calling. Number three, your career is a tool for evangelism. Number four, your career is a tool for transforming the world one person at a time. That's why I said one person at a time. So if you ever feel like that could be cool in your office where nobody is seeing you because you are not holding the mic, it's not a tool for evangelism. That's a lie. That's a lie. One person at a time. Remember that even in your office, there are more than one people. So you have the security. When you get in, in the morning, when you pass the security, there's a way your life and the words of your mouth can witness Jesus to the security man. So if we have people like that here, when I mean, no offense, no, not, I mean, I, I have no intentions of breaking any table that I will not build. But if you walk past this, as you are going into the office, you walk past the security, you don't greet or he greets you and then you are squeezing your face like, you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that's not us. That's not us you miss an opportunity to witness because you might not literally say to him, Jesus loves you, but because of the attitude that you have, there's a day that it would need a wisdom and you already have, you, 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 you already have deposits with him to listen to you. Just me one day, ah, ah, Baba Kilo Shein, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? You look dull today. Ah. He is my children. And you start to speak words of life into him. You start to speak words of the spirit into him. That's how we witness Christ. Hallelujah. And number five, your work is the golden, your work is the garden given to you by the Lord to tend. Your work is the garden given to you by the Lord to tend, by the Lord to tend. Now, as I start to move, you know, into uh, what I really want to talk about today. Okay. Okay. I, I know. Um, I mean, if I'm, I'm a, okay. Let me, let me not go there, but I mean, for, for some of us who, you know, um, with the teaching anointing, and I'm sure Mrs. Uh, okay. She's not here. Miss Taylor will understand this. Sometimes we have a tendency to just, you know, just go on that tangent. So I will be really mindful of time today. Now let's get to the part. What do you do in building your desired career? So you want to build your career, you want to get into a new space. You want to get into um, a new territory. What do you need to do? The first thing to do is to be self-aware. So like, you know, one of my dear mentor calls is she says, take yourself to school, right? Take yourself to school. Not just learning about something, but go learn about yourself. Who are you? What is your makeup? Because God is not a waste of resources. God is not an author of confusion. You see, when God created you, the DNA that you were going to have, that was going to fit your career, you already put it into you. So if you draw patterns and lines from how you have been from your young age, you will start to see traces of what your career path will look like. So let me tell you what, people that come to career coaches and say, ma, I don't even know. I have, a, I, I have so many talents. I have so many gifts. You know what career coaches do? You know what coaches do? Well, let me say this. And it's not that you, people sh you should not come and pay for career coaching. I will chase you. I will be in your sleep, in your dream. If you don't pay for career coaching, you have to pay. But basically what career coaches do is that they ask you questions. Have you noticed? Do they look at you and say, take this is the career that I think you should they ask you questions 
okay, so what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? We package it into fine sounding language, into grammar and context. And then when we're done asking you those questions, by yourself, by yourself, you will answer the question that you have asked. You will know your career path by the time we are done, one hour. By the time you have answered all the questions that I've given to you, because what coaches do, coaches are not, they are not, they are not, what's the word now? They are, they are not all knowing. What we do is to ask you questions and infer because the challenge you are having is that you are not able to ask yourself the right questions or you are not able to pull out what is in you. So what coaches do is they ask you questions and they infer what you should do from you. Mm. So you are the one who solves the problem at the end of the day. And like I said, this is not to say that you should not pay anyway. You even have to pay for the coaching because we will ask, we have the questions that we would ask you. But that's what coaches do. So if you draw patterns, you will start to see what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are the things that I that comes to me naturally, right? What are the things that even sometimes when I feel like, even when I'm tired, when there's a mention of this thing, every bones in my body will start up, will, will, will rise up. And it doesn't mean you will not have tired days doing those jobs. It's just that even in that tired moment, they, you, they, you will know there's a recognition system that will say, this is what I should be doing. So first thing, take yourself to school, learn about yourself, be self-aware, right? Be self-aware, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. What are the things that I enjoy doing? What are the things that, even though sometimes I feel like I don't enjoy it, I know that I have the wisdom to do it because it's not everything that you enjoy doing at first, mm -mm. but you will have the strength to do it, right? The second thing I would say is for you to identify a matching career that speaks to your strength more than it speaks to your weakness. A career that speaks to your strength more than it speaks to your weakness. So what I tell people is, because I think that the challenge we have sometimes is why in such a hurry, you can analyze these things. Take your time and break it down and say, okay, so... If you know your strengths, you've done that analysis, and then you can start to say, okay, let me take a list of careers and say, this strength that I have, which career will help me to channel it and give it expression? So that's what you should do. When I, when I, when I started in school, I was in botany. I wanted to do medicine. You know, for all of us who wanted to do medicine, you know, and we know that we couldn't have even survived a year there. You see, God is merciful. He will yank you off from some areas. You'll be thinking, ah, is it that I don't know book? Shame your money. No, God is like, hello, that's not where I need you to be. Come this way. So for those of us that he gave medicine, you know, that a medicine, just medicine does away somehow. But they didn't even give me medicine. You see, that's even the bad thing. I asked for medicine, right? Human beings. They gave me botany, study of plants. I almost felt insulted. Wait, are you people thinking I don't know book? Like, why would you even do such a thing? But anyway, I was given botany. And, you know, after some time, I just knew that this one is not for me. So I started to look at myself. And that's how I got to psychology. Now, I looked at psychology. I mean, psychology is the study of human behavior in a space and an environment and all of those things. There are also different areas to psychology, right? So I started to now look at those areas um okay i started to look at those areas and i said which part of psychology speaks to me um i'm sorry i'm gonna ask for about a about five seconds please just give me five seconds um uh, yeah please give me five seconds to attend to something urgently please All right, uh, so before she, all right. So she she actually made mention of a couple of things. I see that some people left during the prayer and um, some came back to join. So she actually talked about a couple of things which I've written down here in my journal as well. So I'll just um, list them out before she comes back in. So she also made mention of five things which I'm going to read out now. Firstly, she said that God is your employer, right? So, and the funniest thing is that our teaching and what Miss Nat Natasha sent the money are very, very in sync with one another if you are following 
actually. So she said that God is your employer. Okay, she's back. Fine, good. All right. I'm just gonna. Okay. Thank you so much, my sis. Uh, thank you for holding the floor. Okay. Um, apologies. Um, it's, it's just what it is today. Okay. So I was saying that you need to, so when I got into psychology, so I started to look at, okay, what are the areas of psychology that speak more to my strength and my weaknesses? In psychology, you have clinical psychology, right? Which is people who are into therapy, psychiatric patients, you still end up in, in, in medicine, one way or the other. There's clinical psychology, there's forensic psychology. I looked at forensic psychology. It, it, it deals with, you know, uh, people who are in the CIA, private investigators, detectives, and all of that. And then I looked at, um, there's, there's what you call industrial or organizational psychology, which is more into people development, human resources, right, capacity building. And so I did an analysis and then it just made sense that I wanted to focus on, on industrial psychology. So you should find a career that matches with your strengths, all right? And so when you do that, the third thing you should do is to go for knowledge. This one cannot be overemphasized. Go for knowledge, do your research, because even though you find a career that matches with your strength, doesn't mean that you still know everything about it. That's why you're in school anyway. Go for knowledge, do your research, connect with industry mentors, connect with leaders, right? In the industry, connect, connect with people who already, you know, have, have a voice in that industry. And if you have to volunteer for some of the events, do so. Volunteer, intern when you can, so that you can gain um, access to this knowledge that would help you as you begin to chart, you know, the, the, the path of your career. And the fourth thing I would say is to do the work is to do the work. You need to step out in boldness and not in perfection. Did you hear? Because the challenges that we have sometimes as women, and you know, it's funny because sometimes it's peculiar to women, is that we doubt ourselves a lot. We doubt ourselves a lot. Women, and I'm, I'm sure that if we do this research, it would almost be, I would, I would almost be correct. Women are the ones who go for certifications upon certifications, um, master's degree upon master's degree um cost cost upon cost just because they want to build a portfolio of validation for their career before they step out is women have you seen men boldly all they have is bsc he, he, he didn't use to pass bsc mm. once they have bsc they you why do you hear them speak have you have you heard some people speak and you know be like ah, this person must have you now go and check their profile you'll be like ah BSc, University of Lagos, Petroleum Engineering. That's the last. Not even, not even uh, Udemy or nothing. And they will speak with so much eloquence. But women, if we have not taken five, five courses on Udemy, 62 courses on Coursera, masters upon masters, PhD upon PhD, we have not finished. We are still there, waiting for those things to validate how we can step out and be all that God has got us to be in the career space. So I'm telling you today that after you have done this work, step or after you have done all this research, step out, step out, step out in boldness and start to do. The biggest way to learn is also by doing. You also learn by doing. If you don't do it, you won't make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you won't know the one not to do the next time. Right? I read something from Adam Grant. I think it was about three days ago and it was so profound. He said that imposter syndrome is, oh, I, I, I can't figure it out. Uh, it, it, says, uh, it says, oh, I don't know how to do it. People are going to figure me out or people are going to uh, figure it out or something. I think it was about saying, oh, I don't know how to do it yet. People are going to, people are going to find out. That's what imposter syndrome does. Imposter syndrome will tell you that uh, you can't do it yet. Hmm. People, hey, your secret is going to come out now. But you know what gross mindset does for you? It will say, I can't do it now, but I'll figure it out. That's what growth mindset does. Imposter syndrome will tell you, ah, I can't do it now. People are going to know that I can't do it. So it's not about the people right now. It's about you growing, right? So you must do the work, step out in boldness and not in perfection. Now, 
as I start to, uh, to uh, I was going to say round up, but <laughs> it's not exactly round up, but we are getting there gradually. Are you learning something this, this evening? Are you learning something? Are you being blessed? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on quickly. Now, how do you thrive in your career as a woman? How do you thrive in your career as a woman? If you are aware of what is going on or what has been going on in the career space for a while is that by default, somehow, women have been a bit disadvantaged in the past. Women have to do extra work to, to get a seat at the table. We have to, and you know, and this is not to say don't get your certifications. In fact, this is what led us to you know, getting those certifications so that we can be validated at the table in the boardrooms, right? Because we had to do extra work, right? For us to be seen as professionals, as serious people, right? And we thank God because we're in an era where the Lord is really amplifying our voices. We are in that era where the Lord is raising us as industry leaders, as visionary voices. We are in the era of the future forward female. So it's not even a competition. It's not even that, ah, finally, women are getting a seat, a seat at the table. No, it's that God has said in this time and in this space, women are going to be at the forefront of what I'm doing in this season. The revival in, this, in, in the industry, in the career space, it is that God said women are going to be at the forefront. So it's God's agenda. You must also remember that. So it's not about ah, men, finally, we are now uh, equality, equalization, or all these things. It's not even about that anymore. It's God's agenda saying, I am putting my women on the front line. Hallelujah. So that's what it is. So how do you thrive in your career as a woman? Some of the things I've already mentioned, you know, and I'll just reemphasize. The first thing to do is to aim for excellence. The Bible says that whatsoever your hand findeth do it, doing, do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you are doing right now, if you're already in that space, even if you don't like it, you cannot grumble. Yeah, it's just what it is. I tell people, if you don't like what you are doing, move, you're not a tree. I would rather you change your career or you change your workplace or you change whatever than to grumble and complain because the moment you start to grumble and complain, you are breaking the law. And as believers, as Christian women, we don't break the law. We enforce the law. So you can't say you're a Christian woman and because you don't enjoy your job, you come in, you, you from the security, they already know that things are not going okay today. You, the, way you, the way you even greet the security, the way you greet the cleaner, they'll be like, ah, ah. Shanti in Nietzsche suit, blue tobacco. She does she really have Jesus? You know, there's a way people can question your Christianity by how you behave in the workplace, by the way you do work. So don't be that person who, when it's time to come to be like, oh, I'm a woman now. Oh, buddy, can you really help? Can you help me? Oh, you know that you know that you this man. No, don't do that. You go for excellence. We're excellent women. We have an excellent spirit. When it's time to do work, we do it with all excellence. So you go for excellence, whatever your hand find it doing. If God can look at your work and God will not be able to score you well, you are not doing work well. Remember, God is your employer. And because God is an excellent God, you can't, you can't disgrace God. No, he will not let you. So you must aim for excellence. The second thing, right? And this is in two folds, is you should ensure to be independent and also interdependent. And I will explain what that means. Is that in a workplace, you must learn to advocate for yourself. And you must also learn to work as a team. Because sometimes women are the ones who have challenges. So we've, over the years, we've, is this swing now or swung? Please apologize, apologies for my English. Is that we've moved to the one side of the pendulum. So it's either we are so dependent right, on the team that we can't seem to do work and do good work alone. Or we do good work alone, we are so independent that we feel like we don't need a team in the workplace. But we must be able to balance the two. You must be able to advocate for yourself as a woman in the workplace, and you must be able to work as a team. Other women in the workplace are not your competition. They are your collaborators. They are your sisters. They are your sisters. Don't just make women supporting women another mantra. Let it start from you. You have a colleague at work, a female colleague who is gunning for a promotion. Be rooting for her. Tell her, this work, 
you sabiduam, I'm rooting for you. You root for her, you pray for her. That's how we do. That's how we do. We're not competing with ourselves in the workplace. Ah, sorti bele gadabahash. We're not. We're collaborators. Because the work of the father requires yes. We are collaborators. We would empower one another. We would enable one another. We would push one another into the destiny that God has for us. Hallelujah. So you must be independent, but also interdependent. We must support one another in the workplace, right? The third thing is to acknowledge your work and take credit for it. This is another area where women are falling short in the past time. Acknowledge your work and take credit for it. Because let me tell you what, you are doing good work, but if the people who matter don't see that you're doing good work, it, it, might just, it might just stop at doing good work. Because you see, the workplace has its own system structures and policies that there are people who are gatekeepers in the workplace that they must know you. They must identify you. They must recognize you. So if you are doing good work, when it's time for board meeting, you're saying, mm, so um, I can't really take credit for this work, the work that you did, that you, you did, that you know that you woke up at 12 a.m. and didn't finish your presentation until 5 a.m. You now say you can't really take credit for this work. Stop it. Stop it. You've done a fantastic presentation. It's not that you not be singing everywhere. Ah, it's not that. But there's a way you talk about your work with confidence, with all boldness. I did this work. Uh, acknowledge your work and take credit for it. It's as simple as that. Take credit for your work. When you've done good work, take credit for the good work that you've done. When they're telling you well done in the workplace, is women that know, I mean, no offense, I mean, I'm a woman. So this, this is the way I talk to myself. Tony, like, you, 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 are, you are your own challenge. We are the ones who say, oh, well done. You've done such a powerful presentation. Oh, really? Ah, I didn't really do much. You, and, you know, it was just little. I just the PowerPoint, my Canva. Say thank you and move on. That's it. I'm, I'm sorry. I know, I know I'm already, you know, getting to play. I, I really apologize. It was not even my intention. So of course, acknowledge your work and take credit for it. The fourth thing is build your new connections with your team members. I've already established this in number two. Build your new connections with your team members, industry leaders, employers, right? You, even if you don't have total access to people in key positions, try and build connections with people in your industry, right? LinkedIn is a great, it's such a great platform. Like, I love LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn is my new Instagram. I'm constantly because there's such a rich network of people in your industry. Ah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I mean, I've been to the US, to the UK by LinkedIn. I don't need to go there fiscal. LinkedIn. You have colleagues all over the world. People who have the same career vision as you, who you can connect with. That's how we grow. So build your new connections. The fifth thing is be authentic. Don't try to be a people pleaser right as a woman in the workplace be authentic right and it's not this is not just this is beyond oh this is why i am i can't change. no that's not even what i'm talking about today right be authentic is bring your true personality your true skills your true knowledge your true competencies bring it to work don't try and be someone else you know just because you want to climb a career ladder no be authentic in the workplace. Play to your strength. The sixth thing is to play to your strength and constantly upskill yourself. So this is where all those certifications come in. So ladies, I'm not saying don't get them. In fact, you need those certifications. And, you know, if you are here as well and, you know, your BSc was, was, was about five years ago or four years ago and you have not added any other thing, be it a certification, an open course. Uh, ah, no, I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to your neighbor, but just, just look straight, you know, the people I'm talking to, don't be looking straight, right? This is, this is, this is instruction from the Lord, right? Go get knowledge, go get knowledge, go get knowledge, okay? Don't let that four years ago BSC be the last thing that you have on your profile, go get knowledge. You have a lot of courses, free courses, paid courses, whatever, go get knowledge and constantly upskill yourself. The world is changing. And so you can't remain where you are. You've got to change with the world. Industries are changing, trends are coming up. What used to obtain in HR five years ago when I was doing CIPM, it has advanced. It has advanced. So now I'm looking for, you know, 
yeah, it has advanced. So go for knowledge, go for knowledge. Uh, please let me know um, I, I, um, when it's almost time, maybe like five minutes in the end of my time, because okay. the way I'm seeing Minister and, tell us this, I feel right. like maybe Shmuti over time. Have I over time? No. <laughs> okay, okay. Please let me know when it's almost time. Thank you, sis. Okay, so um, play to your strengths and certainly um, constantly upskill yourself. Get knowledge, you know, get those courses. And the final thing, right, in section is be open to feedback and be comfortable with people criticizing your work. This, this is a challenge, is one of the biggest challenges that we have in the workplace with women. Um, am I the only one that cannot hear her? I, I can't hear her. I can't hear her as well. Maybe it's a network. Let's just open. Oh, I think she left. Maybe she's going to join again. Hmm. I guess not. Okay. I guess not. Okay, so before uh, she... Let me touch on something. All right, all Maybe. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> About... Um, taking feedback, you know, and it's very, very important. You know, something I learned, and sometimes feedback is not really cool, but there was a feedback that I got that really helped me. You know, it wasn't a cool feedback, you know, but it really helped me. So I'm the kind of person, and I know a lot of us do that thing here. And I used to be that kind of person that I want to send somebody a message. I want to communicate something to that person. I'm not like, hello, <laughs> wait for the person to just respond. Yeah. You know, I'm now saying hi or something, not an after typing. So I said, I know the person did not respond. And I said, Are you there? <laughs> I was my boss. And he just said, Only go straight to the point. People are busy. It's not like, like you didn't really call me well, but so let's I start to say, You yeah, are sorry now. Like, I don't, I'm not just saying thank you because. All that I just learned to just distill, you know, emotions from. And it's, it's very, I, I was talking to a friend some days ago, and I said, women are naturally emotional people, right? We were, we were, we grew up emotional. You know, if a, a girl, if, if you're if you're saying something as, as a child, you know, it, it was girly. People made me feel like, oh, the rainy, I feel like, what do you mean? The rainy, I feel like, like she's a girl, or just leave her. But when you grow up, you now find out that those things are actually not the way life works. Mm. Life doesn't work that way. You can't be doing like, especially in the workplace. So um, I saw us, and I think it got the memo that I was actually us. I'm probably to this way it was, but we have moved on. So, but then it helps me that there's a way to communicate with you that are busy. You don't just go into, I can't, even now, if I want to communicate with any other person, I don't know who you are. I don't just come into your DM and say hello. I don't come, I tell you what I need to do and what I need to communicate. I mean, move on. And let the person respond. So this thing about you know taking feedback, sometimes, you know, for us a lot in a lot of women, we it's a tall order. Trust me. Women are emotional people. So things that are hurting, we, we feel things deeply. So it's a tall order for a woman to be able to distill our emotions from logic. So sometimes we can, women, and we will be sincere, we are rational. You know, we can be rational. You do something wrong, but we know that you are wrong. But you are, you are holding on to the fact that you are, you are feeling somehow. But meanwhile, if you, if you look at, if you logically look at the situation and look at it both sides, you see that I think I was wrong. But you, 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 you know, going on to the way you made us feel, or the way you made me feel, the way you said to me, the way. And you go off and you find out that life doesn't work this way. You can't respond to everything. You can't. Okay, okay. Sandra is asking you to speak up. Sandra, 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 Sandra
Yeah, it's, I'm on my I'm on my AirPods. Oh, yeah. so let me off. Yes, yes, it's not really clear. That clear. Oh, okay. Let, let me disconnect. Let me disconnect. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Thank you. So we, we come into we come into right. I'm finding out that exactly. Yeah, no, it's audible now. Okay, great. so it's better now, right? So you come it's... into life <laughs> and you find out that things don't work that way. So I think I was sharing with TNR people some some days ago. I didn't tell you the story, but I almost it's not like I must I actually lost a partner and it was painful. And and these are the things that you will learn on, on the journey, you know. So, <laughs> but sometimes you don't need to learn. The experience is not the best teacher. You know, so I, even if the person had his own fault, I had, a, I also had my own fault. I was kind of a person that would not let things go. Like, you said it, it pained me. So, <laughs> we must trash it out. You know, so I, I found out that even though this person was my friend, this person is still my work person. This person is my work person. And so the way I would relate to this person, I think it's um, Mrs. Um, um, Shodipe that is trying to reach. Let me. Okay, let I'll, me I'll say will... hello. Yeah. Okay. 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 We are for the back and forth. All right. Um, she's gonna come in and um, finish okay. up with the chain. So why she's she's gonna join us? Just try to prepare your questions. If you've got, if I've got lots of questions for her, right? Because you're just <laughs> <laughs> on the head. Okay. I'm the back to me Stella. all right okay my... yeah so i found out that life doesn't work that way people don't really care about how you feel and as a woman in the workplace and i feel like this is where a lot of women we miss it we think that work cares about our emotions and as a woman and particularly as a leader you can't lead with your emotions right now one of the things i'm learning to is to learn to talk to people and not be mushy about talking to people so it's a learning process. It's a learning curve, right? So you can't take, and that's why they say, you don't give women power. Don't give women this, don't give women. Because a lot of times we tend to mix, we can't distill our emotions from reality. To us, our emotions are our reality. So we must, and if you're going to rise, right? And rise to the ranks in our industry, you have to be, you have to be strong. And it's not, the, you have to be mentally and emotionally strong. You can't be that kind of woman that is, you know, hey, they, they don't talk to you today. You just carry your face. Like you must learn how to have conversations with people. And it's not emotional conversations. You bring the facts to the table. This is what it is. You're not, you're not fighting emotionally. Like, hey, it's the way you, it's what you said, it's what you said. No, what are we talking about here? What are the facts? We want to make a decision here. It's not about what I'm saying or what you are saying. Bring the facts to the table. Table. The Let us make a decision based on the facts. And let me now shock you. Because I was being emotional about the whole thing, right? The decision that my partner was asking us to make was actually the right decision. But I, because I was holding on to the fact that how can he talk to me like that? I'm the CEO. <laughs> how can he talk to me that way? It's my company. Right. Exactly. We can, women, we can be, we can be so like that's what I'm saying that these things are learning comes right. This is my company. You can't talk to me like that. If you are going to work with me, you have to listen to me. So you can't, do, you can't do all of that. So now I now had a meeting with somebody later today, and I now found out that what he was saying was exactly what my partner was saying, and I roughed that relationship to the end. Like right now, he's sending me a letter from his lawyer that <laughs> I'm not working with you again. Wow. So this last two weeks has been, even for me, has been like, okay, you know what? You need to really, really, like if you, like you, you need to learn how to separate your emotions from reality. You need to learn how to separate your emotions from facts. So now I'm like, okay, shaking part a lot. Should I go and tell him that you were right? <laughs> but for me also, it's just like, okay, you know what? move on you've made the mistake you've learned from it but you need to move on all right so yeah thank you so good to have you back ma. so over yeah. to you mrs Shodipe. thank you so much sis uh i mean today is empty and just like internet personal internet wasn't going <laughs> home wi-fi wasn't going i don't know you are still in abuja maybe i should just come to this abuja because this 
trenches and Lagos. I don't even understand what's going. We are too many. <laughs> this internet that we're all sharing is not enough for everybody. They don't just log you out. I'm like, no. Anyway, <laughs> but we thank God for His Word because I know that the Lord is instructing us, is correcting us, is admonishing us. You know, as 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 we're listening. Okay, you know, so the, the final thing I said was to be open to feedback, right? When you do work, allow people to correct you. It's not an attack on your person. It's an attack on the work. So sometimes you need to be able to separate the feedback from the person giving the feedback. There are two different things. If we understand this in the workplace, it would make a lot of things easy for us, right? We will not be those women who are always constantly under their emotions. Any small thing, we have gone to the bathroom to go and cry. No, we're not those people. There's something about my work, and it, 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 it's so interesting because I've also I've also had to learn this, right? Because especially if you, if maybe before or if you're a perfectionist, I, I I do good work, and I like to think that I do good work. So when people maybe give a feedback or something on my work, or maybe something that is not pleasing, to me it's like, oh my god, I'm falling short. Like, why would you even want correct this work? And so I'll be all emotional and, and that's even on that story, emotional intelligence. Women need to learn it specially. Control and manage of emotions, right? Thank you so much, sis. I'm rounding up very shortly. So we need to be able to receive feedback. Both positive and negative feedback is for growth. So we need to be able to receive it, right? And as I round up, how do you chart new territories in your career? Maybe you want to break from you know, one ground to higher grounds because you will, there's, there's the career ladder. So for every step that you climb, you would need new competencies. You would need new skills. If you are just starting in your career, all you might need is technical skills, right? But as you're growing in your career, in fact, it would interest you to know that your technical, your the demand for your technical skills will start to reduce. You will need lots more behavioral skills. I don't call it soft skills. That's the mistake people have made. They've called it soft skills and then they don't now have the skills and people have been fired for not having it. They're not, so, they are behavioral skills. Things like emotional intelligence, interpersonal relationship, communication, leadership. Those are the things that they will start to demand from you as you start to grow in your career. So just don't look at yourself and say, ah, but accounting, I can do that thing in my sleep. There's a day your accounting skills will not be needed to promote you. It will be, how do you talk to people on your team to promote you? Is that serious? Because you know what John Maxwell said? It says talent is not enough. Everybody is talented. We're all superstars. You can't even say you don't have talent. Why? Because God, the God that created you and I, the God of all talents, the God of skills and competencies, you can't even say you don't have talent. So we all have talent. But you know one thing that God still told us to do is in Romans where he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That renewing of your mind, what it does to you is as you're renewing your mind, it starts to affect your behavior externally. So the way you used to talk before, how you just see anybody and talk to them in the workplace, because I sabi do the work. Renewing your mind, when you start to interact with, with the world, the Holy Spirit starts to tell you, you don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. You're a carrier of God's presence. You talk with respect. You talk encouragement. The words of your mouth should encourage, should inspire. So that's the part that we need to work on. That's the part where a lot of us need to work, not even the technical skills, behavioral skills, how we interact. So the first thing, of course, and I've said this before, you know, and emphasizing is, is acquire knowledge, build expertise, and gain hands-on experience. When you are starting in your career, do the work. Don't excuse yourself from challenges. Challenges build your career muscles. They build your competency muscles. Do the work. Go for challenges. Don't do the barest minimum. What is on your job decision is all you do. And then at the end of the month, you collect salary and go home. People don't grow like that. You don't. It's just the same way that if all you do is, is um, daily, daily manner, right? Daily bread. One two hours devotion in a day. There's no other time to pray extensively or study the word. We can't grow like that. We are going to grow, but it's to a minimum. But if you want to build and expand, you must go extra miles. Acquire knowledge, gain expertise, hands-on experience, experience that you gain from putting your hands to the work. That's how people have a voice in this industry. So yes. that then when you don't have to do the work, you will know 
you know there's some people that they are there right now is all is is at them being is a fair fair because one day one day the all the work that you escape from and thinking that you can just smile your way to the top it's not be enough so let's do the work we are christian women we must do the work we must gain hands-on experience okay and the second thing is Talk about what you can do and what you are willing to do from a problem solving angle. So if you want to chart new territories in your career, right? Um, when you went for your first interview, your mode of interview was, um, they would ask you, um, why do you want to join us? And then you find something fanciful to say. As you start to chart new territories, as you start to grow up the ladder, you will have to start speaking from a problem solving angle. So you must get to a point in your, in your career that when you go for some certain interviews, in fact, you know what I tell people, there's no interview I can go for now. Is either I don't want the job, but it's not that maybe I failed the interview and you it's not possible because I will so sell myself to you at the interview, you would think I was doing you a favor to join your company. Mm. Is, is, is what I have mastered, is what the Lord has ingrained in my spirit, that I must be so great, I must be so attractive at that point that you would want me. So I will look at your company, I'll first of all dissect it, the problems that you're having, the questions I will even ask you, you interview me, I will interview you, the questions I will ask you, you will know that uh, this person, so you must come from a problem solving angle. When you want to step into new territories, don't just come because, oh, I've spent 10 years. It's time for me to grow. You can spend three years in the place and you will shoot up. Yes, ma'am. That's what the Lord did with me. Right? So it's not about, it's not so much about the years of experience. Say 22 years of experience. Now I'm qualified to be a CEO. It's not just that. God can raise you. God can raise you. If he looks at you and he's giving you a solution to solve a problem in your industry, God can raise you because you have the solution. Okay? So you speak about your work from a problem-solving angle. Of course, I already talked about being open to new challenges, right? When they ask you, can you do it? Your first answer should not be no. Your first and final only answer should not be no. Can you do it? Um, I haven't tried this before. But if you give me some time, I'm going to get back to you on this. Let me take some time and do some research on it. That's what we say in the workplace. It's not that you say, ah, can you do this new project? Ah, no, 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 I can't do it. That's not what I'm paid to do. We don't do that. If not, people will keep shedding responsibilities from you. You just say that you're not growing. You are just there. When they come and meet you, can you do it? I haven't really done it before. But if you give me some time, I can come back to you with answers. That's how we do in the workplace. Okay. And another thing you must know is you must end your seat at the table. Nobody is going to give you a seat because you're a woman. That's the mistake that we have made in past years. I say because we're on the feminine side, because we have been fighting for equality, at least one have one woman on your, on your board of directors. No, no. It's, so it's not that when I get it, I say, now that you're a woman, what, are, what can you contribute here? You must end your seat at the table. Don't expect to be handed over to you. End your seat at the table, do the work, show competencies, right? And finally, this is the big one for me, is that you must maximize your personal senior career advisor, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my personal career coach, is my senior career advisor, is my advantage everywhere. The Holy Spirit. It's the one who brings the extra to your ordinary to make it extraordinary. It brings the super to your natural to make it supernatural. That's why people look at you and say, oh my God, you've done so well. Then if you are true to yourself, sometimes you now go back up and say, kill us or not, they say I've done so well, I have. Sometimes you can feel like that because the Holy Spirit amplifies your work. The little work that you think you are doing behind the cubicle, the Holy Spirit is expanding it in front of the MD, expanding in front of CEO, making you feel like you are the best thing. That's what the Holy Spirit does to you. You see that problem that everybody's running out of skelter, that they are calling three hours meeting, board meeting, Monday meeting, weekly meeting, that they are trying to solve. The Holy Spirit just shows you. It's like, Kini, Kulti, is not, Ikolebai. And you know the beauty of the Lord. You know the beauty of God. Ah, It will bring that problem so that you can have answer to it. When you now have answer to it, people will not say, eh, hey, this is the answer. Uh -uh, it's not this deep. But you've already, you're already the one that gave it. You don't consign me if you think it's not deep. But at least I'm the one that brought it. 
I'm the one that has saved you people three hours of board meeting, three hours of brainstorming session. I'm the one that has saved you. God has given it to me to save you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He is your advantage in the workplace. The work that you do that expands where you are, where leaders of industry will come and find you and say, have it about you. Like, oh, so you at the YMC, they are always talking about, hey, that's good to meet you. What do you do? That's, that's what the Holy Spirit does for you. He will put your names in the hairs of decision maker. You just be your cubicle. The end of just walking past. Oh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Abigail. Oh, you are the Abigail. Hmm, I've heard of you. He does the, you don't need to know where he heard from. Head of you. Ah, lo sete le pahande. I love the Holy Spirit. You don't need to know where. Is that he has heard of you? Angelic publicity. Your name will be ringing in their minds, in their ears, and it's not based on doing faulty work. No, it's that you are doing diligent work. You are being diligent in the business of the master. And one day he says, "I've heard your name before. Ah, hey, you are that. You're that girl. Oh, has it been working here?" Would you want to come for a chat in my office? Let's see, what other areas do you want to explore in the company? The Holy Spirit does that to you. And because as you thrive in your career, you need the favor of God that will bring you the favor of men. <laughs> because they are gatekeepers for that industry. They are mm. people who stand as principalities. And so you need the power of the Holy Spirit to break into those places. That industry that feels like, ah, in this industry, people don't used to go past four years. Never! When the mm. Holy Spirit comes on the scene, you break protocols, you leap over walls, you climb over barriers. That's what the Holy Spirit does to you. They will not look at you and say, this young girl, eh, this is a minor call. It's not really me. It's the oil. It's the anointing of God upon my life. That when mm -hmm. I step into a place, whatever career, whatever industry, I'm a voice in my industry. I may not look like it today, but I know where I'm going because the Holy Spirit is my advantage. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that whatever level you are today, Ekuba etias ekianda eklatus epragados mekis to veladis ekabahando koparias ekanto la bahasha ekaragados mekese tele bahande frekiata ekias to belegedush malika and sianta wherever you are today the Lord is bringing you up into the place that He has prepared for you. He is preparing you for what He has prepared you for. He is making ready for you that which you need to expand, mm. to elevate, to go higher. In the name of Jesus, you will be a voice and a name that cannot be forgotten in your industry. The mm. Lord will take you higher. It will put your name in the ears of kings. It will give you wisdom, strategies, frameworks, blueprints that will cause you to be a shining light in your industry, in your workplace. The hand of the Lord is upon you to do great and mighty things. The hand of God, the spirit of the Lord is upon you to do exploits. Whatever you lay your hands on will prosper by the help of the spirit. You are the one who God is using in your generation, in your workplace, in this time to set the agenda of God. You are the one who will stand as a representative, as an ambassador of what it means to follow God Amen. in your career, in your industry, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. I'm wowed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma. We are sincerely grateful. Wow. 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 And I pray for you and we all pray for you that the wisdom of God would never depart from you in the name of Jesus. Your ministry grows, grows. Your coast is enlarged in the name of Jesus both your ministry, everything that concerns you are perfected in the name of Jesus. You walk from glory to glory. Your path shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much, Ma. We are so, so grateful. On behalf of we, the TNHR and every excellent lady in this house, in this call, on this call right now, we say we love you. We appreciate you. And we would love to see more of your face, all right? Okay, so um, thank you very much for still joining or still being with us on this call. We've got just a few minutes to go. 
And um, if you've got any questions, all right, just just no time. Just we'll, we'll take like just three questions, all right. So just um, you can unmute your mic and um, ask your question, or you can drop the question in the chat box. I would read it out and she will answer us. Okay. Are we still here? All right. So while we go away, we should show the I was talking about, and I I, got, I think somebody dropped the comment too. So I was talking about the fact that um, people say women don't, you know, when a woman comes into power, um, into a place of authority, men are very skeptical. And that's because we feel like women are very emotional people. And <laughs> today you can make a decision that, you know, you're so happy, you can just sign up for listening to, you know, that would, you know, and when you're angry, you can scatter everywhere. <laughs> so, so. Again, it's just, and I know it's it's a general women, like every, because personally, when I was going through this, I began to reach out to a couple of women. I'm like, is she a mini Maybe yeah, something's wrong with me. So that I will know where to face my prayer points. You know, and then I found out that it was a general woman problem. That women are, we, sometimes when we're in that space, we really don't know how to distill, you know, logic from, and in the long run, when we now learn our body has now come down, we now find out that we are we actually wrong. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so again, how as in, I mean, practical, you know, steps and practical ways that a woman that is, you know, going to be an industry leader because you know that if we are going to be an industry, leader, I can't be like that. <laughs> you know, God, you know, God, job you stay in UDA. Yeah. 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 Don't have a lemon, have a like when you learn, you, you rise up, you know. And um, so, like practical ways for a woman to um be able to distill emotions, particularly when it comes to decision making and um, when it has to affect other people, even ourselves. Like, how do we how are we able to grow out of that spot where we begin to make decisions based on facts and logic? even though we are still emotional people, because I've seen the extreme where yeah. women have become so stone, they are so stony mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they can't even, there's no, it's like there's no hands of emotion in them again. You know, mm -hmm. they like they've turned to Margaret Thatcher, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's an extreme. So how are we able to balance the fact that, you know, you're a woman, you're in touch with your emotions, but at the same time, you don't make decisions you know, based so based on that, I think it's a tall order for women, really. So mm -hmm. let me know what you do. That, that's such <laughs> an interesting question. Because I mean, I I would ask you the same. Wait, ma, Baola, she must shake in here. But but I think that um, I mean, again, and I like the fact that you said being in touch with our emotions, because God is not an author of confusion. The emotions that we have that seems to be different from men is a gift that God has given to us. That's why yeah. we're able to relate more. That's why we're able to sympathize and empathize. That's why it seems like our, 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 our well of compassion seems to be higher. Because if there was no compassion in this world, oh, my bad, gone. He's gone to be <laughs> bad. So our compassion is necessary. Now, when it comes to decision-making, right, I think that one of the things we must first of all do is to um the word is not patient now is to be able to um is to be able to trust in data right mm. we must make it our friend and i think the challenge we have is that women we say we don't like numbers we run away from anything that has to do with numbers in fact even in hr you don't find a lot of women in hr analytics or compensation and benefits because it has to do with numbers so women want to do all of the other thing employee engagement let's go to a uh, training camp today let's go and play with sand and water team bonding. We like all those things. But when it comes to doing Excel sheet, mm. by default, we run. That's why we always have challenges sometimes. Yeah. Because we need data to make informed decisions. Yeah. We must fall in love with numbers. Yeah. You know, in the workplace, there's something we say, we say, you bring data, every other thing we trust in God. And like, if you're not bringing data, trust in God, bring him yeah, and I business with you, basically. <laughs> right? So data, we must make data informed decisions. We yeah. must be friends. We must love data. When mm -hmm. the facts are presented, this is what obtains. That's how we make our decisions, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think one other thing, you know, to add to making, you know, is we must also be able to listen. Mm -hmm. Because by default, most women are defensive. Mm -hmm. Because you already say, oh, as a woman, I'm in decision-making space. 
yeah, I just got to make the decision because I'm a woman yeah. and I want people to feel like I can make a decision. You know, the ability to make decision too is another thing that we can add as a badge of honor that, mm -hmm. oh, she made a decision, it was a good call. But there's no harm in you not knowing what to do than ask questions and say, okay, I'm about to make this decision. If there's someone in the workplace, I'm about to make this decision. What do you think we can do about it? This is what I'm thinking. Because if only you are the ones, of course, there are times where you are going to have to make, uh, make the final decision, have the last say. But 80% of the time, your decision can be that nobody else is seeing what you are seeing. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Katu. Mm -hmm. At least there must be some people that say, truth is, we might not like this decision. And you have to be objective to say, we might not like, like this decision, but we think that is the best way to go. Yeah. So that's how we must do it. And I think the big one also for me, and because we're Christian women on the school, is we must learn to, it's not even learn, <laughs> we must pray in tongues constantly. That one, I, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it, because what the Holy Spirit does for you is, it helps you to keep your emotions under the spirit. If you spend time praying in tongues a lot, if you're a woman of prayer, decision making, even when you're making a decision, it might not be convenient with, with you, but you will know in your knower that this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will just navigate your mind, your emotions. It's, it's what they call spirit control temperament. The Holy Spirit is the change, is the distinguishing factor because mm -hmm. by, by, by nature, there's a way we want to operate. There's a way the emotions override. But bringing those emotions under the control of the spirit is very important. So when we spend time praying in tongues, things that should not be there will fall off eventually. And it's what it is. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a question for the sake of others. So you actually mentioned something about feedback. And I've got to realize that um, feedback I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Ma? Yes. Okay, good. So um, feedback is actually part of our growth channel in the workplace, right? So we learn to, we learn to embrace constructive criticism, right? So now in, in an organization or in a workplace whereby feedback is not really their thing, mm -hmm. they don't give feedback, they are, they are, they are they are in their they are, they are workplace that they don't, they, they are not really, they don't really tell you what it is. They would rather mm -hmm. backbite you than confront you and tell you, you know, we Africans, we, if we don't like you, if we don't like something, we'll tell you, babe, what you did, I don't like it. But there's some people that they will not tell you that you did this thing. So my, how do we, how do we go for that feedback? How do we chase that feedback? How do we ask for that feedback. Who are the right people we talk to to ask for that feedback, Ma? Great, you, you've actually answered the question and it's to go and ask for the feedback. Cause I think the one thing that we don't do is we wait and we expect people to come and give us feedback. But okay. I tell people at the workplace, if you want to grow, you don't wait for performance review sessions to receive feedback. You will go and ask for feedback. You do a project, you go ask for feedback. You go ask your line manager. In fact, it's it's the common thing with managers. The moment you go and meet your manager and say, oh, sir, I just wanted to you know, get some feedback on this work that I've done so that I can know areas to improve next time. They will give you feedback. They will. It's very rare for you to see managers that says, ah, oh, I don't have time. Oh, everything is perfect. No, because you see by default, your manager too wants to be able to say that you didn't do something so well in that sense. So yeah. if you have not done so well in an area, Except your manager is maybe your husband or so, but even your husband will tell you when you're doing something wrong because he has nothing to lose by telling you the truth. In fact, the part where you say you where he knows that you have not done well is the easiest for him to tell you. So he will tell you. So you want feedback on a project, you go meet your line manager, you go meet your boss. Don't wait for performance review sessions. Go ask them, set a time on their calendar. If you think they are very busy, set a time on their calendar and say, I block this time on your calendar. I would really like to have one, uh, um, a 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one session just for us to explore, uh, you know, this project. What are some of my, um, what are some of the feedback that you have for me? How do you think I can do better? So go ask them, set a time on their calendar, right? Sit with them, ask them questions so that you can know how to do better. And I'm, I'm very sure they will give it to you. 
they will. Another thing you can do in terms of assessment is to ask your colleagues. So it's not only your line managers that can give you feedback, your colleagues as well will give you feedback. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are even usually quick to do it. So ask your colleague, oh, this work that I did, this presentation, help me take a second look at it, right? What do you think I could have done better? So you are either asking your you can even ask your um your direct reports who are the people that are younger than you, right, in the workplace. So there's something we we'll call the 360 degree performance appraisal which is appraisal from your line managers, the people above you, your colleagues or your subordinates, and then your direct reports, the people below you in that sense, 360 degree to give you. So what, if your line manager is missing something, your colleague won't miss it. If your colleague is missing something, your direct report won't miss it. So you're gonna get feedback that way if you ask. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma. We are so, so grateful. So um, we've come to the end of this section. Before we go, I would actually hand over to Ms. Stella to just give us the end of all for the upcoming section by 8 p.m. Ms. Stella, I don't know if you are there. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, All right, okay. so we're not going to do any, we've, we've shot out like exactly yeah. this time yeah. already. So please, you're not going to do anything. So we are just going to hold on to the last final, final session by 8 p.m. So every other thing will be done by that time. So thank right. you, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Shodipe. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for being able to join in. And thank you, everyone, for everyone who stayed up to this time. Like um, I'm sending you eogs, like really, really eogs, because a couple of you know, I feel like a lot of people left it when you know were praying and you know they didn't really know what was going on and all of that stuff. So, you know, but for everyone who 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 stayed till this time, thank you so much. And yeah, so the final lap is by 8 p.m. So it was supposed to be, like I said, everything about TNR is boot camp, boot camp, boot camp. So because that's how we are trained. That's how we are, you know, that's how we are, that's how we grow. You know, it, sometimes these stretches are needed, you know, to take in everything that we need to take in at, at, at once. So we'll see you by 8 p.m. So thank you, Mrs. Shodipe. Thank you everyone for staying on to the end. I think Mrs. Shodipe, let, you can exit now. Thank you so much, Ma. We really appreciate it. <laughs> like this one was hot tonight. <laughs> we thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma. God, there she go. All right. So, hi everyone. So, we'll um, see by eight pm. Bye bye. Bye so, guys. Like eight pm, please. Eight pm. Eight pm is eight pm. So we can round up on time. So don't worry, I'll be teaching. So all things being equal, we don't have to waste a lot of time. So I'll see you by eight pm. And I'm teaching on the law of exposure, so you don't want to miss it, right? Yeah. Right. Bye for now. Bye, guys. Later. Bye. <laughs> yeah.